All right, I believe we are streaming live. I don't expect anybody to watch this at 9 o'clock in the morning, but hey, you never know. So, anyways, um, I can't get this game out of my mind, to be honest with you. And um, I got... I got like everything for it, all the bling and stuff like that. I'm going to do a review on it. We're going to add some components of it to the game. So I, I want to show you uh, some of the things. We haven't made our deck or anything like that. So you, there's these awesome player mats, which is nice because you could put these um, these scorecards. Instead of writing everything down, uh, you now have these cards with these really cool black skulls. And also... Um, there are a couple of items in here that are a little different, uh, and these dice are going to be a tribute to them. We'll worry about that when that comes. Uh, has this great little player remind rules reminder thing. Not that there's a ton of rules, but here, this here, I think is just what really starts to bring this game together. And this comes in the, um, oh no, they don't, they come separately. And I really suggest that you get them. Now, we haven't even set this up yet. Here's our three bad guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of them. The collector box comes with uh, sleeves. And they are glorious sleeves. That's all I'm going to tell you. Is They're fantastic. So, Chris, how are you? So what we're going to do is we are going to pick our bad guy. Boom. Done. All right. We already picked our heroes. But I'm going to get that... To that in a minute also in the collector box comes this really heavy token well i know that's the first player for sure all right i shuffled these up but i'm going to do this i'm going to just kind of cut them a little bit and then we are going to lay 15 of these on top one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we've got to get through 15 of those. So the story always changes. And, and there, I haven't even gotten to the expansions yet. Now, I forgot one thing. I forgot the starting card. But that's all right. Um, because we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the things. I, I mean, some of the things that just come in this thing is just ridiculous. And it's very thematic, and I, I, I'm, ju I'm just completely sucked into this whole experience. Now, what did I do? Not unless I put those cards in there, which is possible, knowing me. So I'm just going to move this box here. And there should be a starting card. It says, do not start. Ah, here it is. <laughs> okay. I mixed it in with everything. Good thing we didn't pick that as one of the cards, right? All right. Now we're ready to go. But before we go, let's learn the backstory of each one of these guys. Okay? This is what really starts to bring this in. And in this book, it's called Tales from the Dark. Now, here's the awesome thing about it, okay? Uh, in the back... It kind of shows you all the stuff that you can get to it. And you can go to themeborn.com to get this. They're coming out with a space version of this, too. Uh, okay, count me in. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's see. Where was it? Ah, oh, here we go. So there is a tale for everybody, including all the creatures. And it gives you some backstory. So we have the tailor. So let's find out what, what's up with her. So the tailor, page 32. Hopefully her story is not long. Maybe it is. So it tells you all about her and everything that happened with her. Well, let's find out. I mean, what the heck? I can, I can maybe read this quick. The tailor leaned forward in her chair, souping low over her workbench, dexterous fingers unwavering as she defied a manicured needle and thread into a tiny neat stitch. She had risen early, bathed, and having thrown open the shutters of her window, was now settled into a spell of focused needlework in the brilliant morning light. The door to her room burst open. Startled, 
She put the needle, uh, the needle clean through the flesh of her thumb and cried out, Shh, foolish girl. It was the voice of her uncle, an unusual looking man with a carefully cultivated mustache and dark handsome figures. His slender rapier was drawn. He looked about agitated. I am alone, uncle, said the tailor in, in her voice. You startled me. Look, I'm bleeding. She wrapped her wound in a scrap of cloth as she scolded him. Her uncle shot it, shot it a glance and tuttled. You'll be fine. He peered nervously out the doorway now, looking this way and that way. Finally satisfied, he shut the door carefully, sheathed his blade, and leaned against the flame with a heavy sigh. The frame with a heavy sigh, excuse me. The tailor looked up and down with disgust. He had brought the stench of stale wine and something fouler still into her airy workshop. Look at you, a noble man indeed. You haven't slept again. Where do you disappear to at night? He raised his hand to dismiss the question, catching his breath. Straightening, he took off his hat and tossed it over to where she sat, a fine creation of soft, thick velvet. It had, been, it had seen better days. She recoiled at the smell of the thing as it landed on her lap. Just a small tear to men, he said, removing his luxurious fur coat and hanging it on a peg beside the threshold. It was splattered with mud. He ran his finger absently through his thick, shoulder-length black hair, then began to unlace his undershirt. The tailor was about to look away when she noticed the blood on it. This one needs washing too, said her uncle. He noticed her reaction and smiled. Don't worry, it isn't mine. She looked, she looked him straight in the eyes, seriously. He darkened, walked over to her, and held out the shirt expectantly, repeating his command, wash. The tailor now scratched, now saw scratches on his arm and chest, and what looked like a series of burns on his abdomen. She opened her mouth to speak, only for her uncle to clamp hold of her jaw and lean in uncomfortably close. His breath was rotten. Not a word, girl. See to your work. Roughly, he released her, his grip on her. He staggered across the room and flopped onto a pile of fabric in the corner. Spread eagle head back, muttering incoherently. The tailor fought back tears and began to do as she was bidden. The bright morning sun seemed paler to her now, thinner. Soon the man was snoring loudly, and she let herself cry, muffling the sound with the fabric, the fabric of her headdress. This was the last time she vouched, looking across at a collapsed form of her uncle. Despite her anguish, a plan was forming. Her uncle awoke, dressed and departed as the sun began to set. He said nothing, but nodded his approval at the repairs the tailor had carried out. He did, in fact, look well, or at least his clothes did. His tired, distant eyes and weathered face told a different story. Before departing, he drank a jug of water in a single draw, wiped his mouth, slammed it down on the table, then opened the door, checked the way was clear, and was gone. The tailor sprang into immediate action. From her drawer, she produced a cloak she had modified with an extra large hood, she, such that she might entirely conceal her face should she wish. She buckled the dagger onto her hip, pulled the cloak over her shoulders, and slipped out after him. The village streets were busy with people ending their workday others venturing out in search of evening's entertainment, she caught sight of her uncle as, as he headed out of the village. Some way, behi some way behind, she followed. She passed the Fletcher, who shot her a look of recognition, tugged her hood down a little farther. The tailor... <clears throat> oops. We went way ahead there. The tailor quickened her pace. No one must see her. Further on... As she neared the edge of the village, she paused and stepped into the shadows of the market, stalled as her friend the smith emerged from his workshop. 
He seemed agitated, his body taut, as he swooped up an axe and made for the woodland. The tailor cursed, for this distraction meant she had lost sight of her uncle. She ran in the direction she had last seen him, finally catching sight of his distant hat. As he disappeared over the crest, some ways off along a wide path, <clears throat> which led away from the village and down into the valley beyond. She pursued him, careful, always to remain a good distance behind. For hours, she shadowed her uncle. uncle. Her, cautious, her caution proved wise as he paused regularly to check over his shoulder or pass water. When he did, the tailor hid hid as best she could, darting from tree to tree, stooping behind hedges, keeping out of the moonlight. She tracked him from mile after mile, down through the valley, high over the windswept hills, and on through the twisted, eerie woodland. It seemed like her pursuit would never end. At length, he took upon a hard, black, rocky path that led across a misty, barren landscape. It was there that she first saw it, rising into the night like a claw of some grotesque beast the castle built upon a base of rock it compromised a staggered array of walls and towers their size and number beyond reckoning it was broad broader than any village she had known and soon almost blotted out the light of the moon itself as her uncle drew close to the castle's gatehouse, the tailor concealed herself behind a cluster of rocks just a few paces away. It was unusually cold here, she noticed, and the stillness in the air unnerved her. A bell tolled from a high tower, and the chatter of unseen creatures drifted through the air. The tailor began to wish she had not come. She wondered what foul habits could could lead her uncle to such a place. Two figures emerged from the gate house to block the nobleman's path. The tailor shifted to better see them. One wore a helmet and carried a blade, while the other long greasy hair spiked club resting in his hand. The men looked rot rotten sort, weary, unkempt, a little like her uncle, truthfully, but with worse tailoring. <laughs> A conversation ensued. Her uncle spoke in long, flowing beats, gesturing his hands. His speech was starkly punctuated by a primitive draw of the guards. He opened his coat, and the men raised their weapons. Relaxing a moment later, when he produced a leather pouch, the men exchanged a look, took it, and waved him through. The, whaler, the tailor stood a little taller, straining to keep track of her uncle as he disappeared through the gate one of the guards watched the nobleman as he went in he went but the other turned to look in the direction from which he had come it was this one who spotted her he tilted his head and grunted attracting the attention of the second guard the tailor ducked behind rocks in an instant her heart pounding had they really seen her she waited a few moments listened there was only silence. But when she next looked out, one of them was approaching. Just a few paces from her hide, she edged back against the rocks and reached for her dagger, readying herself. She would do whatever she had to. A hand clamped down on her shoulder from the other, one, other side. The tailor drew a sharp breath. What have we here? It was the long hair, it was the long hair guard leaning in close with his foul grin, his black, rotten teeth unable to contain his saliva. She pulled back her dagger to strike, but then another hand caught her wrist from behind, the second guard. Aye, a pretty thing. The tailor was surrounded, and in an instant she was disarmed and pinned against the rocks. She managed to, ra managed to raise a knee, connecting hard with the groin of the greasy man who rolled to the floor in agony. The other laughed, drew his blade, and pressed it to her neck. She froze. From his held helm, beady eyes looked her up and down. A feisty one, eh? Good. We've got a special chamber for the likes of you. She saw him raise the hilt of his sword and bring it down towards her. 
There was no way to avoid it. The blow struck her firmly on the cheek, and with a ringing in her ears, she fell to the ground, and as all fell to black. Hmm. So now we know how she, the tailor, got there. We're not going to read the Smith because this is going to make this a, a 50 hour stream. But she's had a hard time, and she's had enough, and she wants to get out. So there's only one thing for us to do, and that's to get her out. Or so we hope. We're going to move these cards over here. We'll move this over here. I'll move, oh yeah, her die can go anywhere here, here. I think we're ready to start our adventure. Let's see if we can survive this one. Now, if we die, there's a book called the Death Book. And on each card, there is a code. And you will go into here and look up the code. And that will uh, lead to the story of your demise. Let's hope that we don't have to use the book, right? All right. Let's begin. After years of incarceration in the depths of the dark castle, you finally break free of your cell. A small stone room adjoining the cell block stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Draw an item per player now. Okay. Uh, we're going to... Oh, did I mix these up? Well, let's make sure. Let's make sure. Hey, Tim. Hey, Deplorable. Chris, how are you? Oh, I think I said hi to Chris already. It's a last minute stream. I want to do it quick. And then I've got to run out and do a few things. And then uh, just kind of brace. See what happens. So we are going to draw. And we have the healing verses. Whenever you roll a double, you may restore one HP to any character. Very cool. <clears throat> As you can see, the slot now holds the the keys here we'll put the u here and for our friend here uh whenever you lose hp discard this item and you lose none all right very helpful <clears throat> let's see if we can survive that is the key ah bringing this cart to a halt beside you an intrigued stranger insists you sample his latest brew a healing elixir claiming he claims a spiked club dangled from his be belt, and keen as you are to move on, you feel it would be unwise to refuse. How bad can it be? You must choose an option. Take a sip. The man smiles and rewards you and draws an item. Take a long draw. Try to roll might in one attempt. Hmm... Well, th this doesn't matter. I think we're going to, because we would gain, we would gain three HP, but that's not, we can't go any higher. So I think uh, the best thing to do is we're going to take a sip and draw an item card. So, wow, we got out of that pretty easy without even having to roll. Cracked Axe. In combat, roll a chapter die along with your character die. Each time, uh, each time you attack. Apply both results. Ooh, this, this is a two-handed weapon. Let's give it to the smith who has more might. This is going to help us. Wow, that, that's a good one to have. First day after moving Evan into college. Very cool. All right, let's go on to our next card. Uh-oh. As you pass a heavy wooden door, it flies open, and a ragged, ragged man bursts through. He welds a shackle... He welds his shackle as a weapon, and his crazed stare sends a clear message. You stand between him and freedom. You must try to roll might or a double in one attempt. Succeed, you manage to deflect his wild flaying, begin combat. Failure, you are smashed aside. All right, uh, well, that's, that's going to be our... our um, <clears throat> Fortunately, we made our smith do it with uh, his strength. I mean, because he has might. Let's see if we can roll a might. Oh, we roll a double might. So we, so we just begin combat. So how does the combat work? Well, they have a might. Uh, we have this. And then we have to roll two dice. 
and wow it's another mite because for each player because he has that symbol so we're going to roll and now we also get to roll one of these dice dice because of the cracked axe so we're going to apply both results hopefully we're going to get something good here all right so first of all the smith so how much damage do we take from him oh we, we'll take two each time um so we're going to get rid of these two which is awesome hmm okay i thought we had a special ability no we do not hmm so we're going to get rid of those two this is going to shield the tailor. The tailor's not going to take any damage, but the smith will take two damage. Not sure. May have. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, Jeff Moore, does the two-handed weapon mean you need to drop the potion? Uh, I would think so. I would think so, but I would just move that over to her, because they're allowed to trade beforehand. Thanks for catching that. <clears throat> but you are well it's a potion though you can carry two items you can use one no I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no but you know what we got the rule book here let's just double check let's double check because it might be in here uh, carrying items okay items are drawn when instruction draw the items uh, buh, 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 buh carrying items you can carry a maximum of two items think of it as one item in each hand ah the item uh, some items describe two hand which means cannot carry any other items at the same time good call nice job Jeff you saved us from ruining the entire stream all right there see how easy that was to fix there we go thank you Jeff uh, so he's gonna take two so he's gonna be down to 16 um ba, ba, ba. all right so she has more of that okay so now we just have to fight again again we keep on going until we defeat our our friend here and oh yes we got it right there that takes care of that so that two-handed weapon is going to come in real handy so we're going to definitely keep that with us as long as we possibly can so, without further ado, we're going to continue on into the jung uh, un jungle, <laughs> on into the castle. Oh, what the heck is this thing? Look at this thing. I'm really, come on. First of all, the art just sucks you in. I, 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 I'm just, this whole game is just so thematic and it just has this beauty. I just can't stop playing it. So, if Rob lives, it means no asterisk in the wind column. That is a good axe, though worth it it sure is uh this passageway suddenly fills with harsh whispers curse flames leap from the top from the wall mount torches to take the form of a demonic warrior tongues of arcane fire surge from its charred skull as a group choose one option flee you escape but you all lose two hp dashing through the fire fight begin combat Mm. combat special whoever deals the fi final blow loses one hp as the demon vanishes in a burst of flame it cannot be blocked he does two hp we both would take two hp is it worth trying or should we fight this dude and, and take him out boy that's a tough call Hmm. I'm going to put the discard pile so we don't get... Con well, no, it stays right here because it goes on top. What am I doing? I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. A flaming demon. Great. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel about it. Um. No guts, no glory. Let's go for it. Let's fight this dude. I mean, really. 
let's fight this dude. All right, and then we have to roll two because it has the special there. Hopefully it comes up with something that we can take out. Perfect. Maybe we can get doubles here and take that out. Uh, let's do this. Just like Home Depot. We have healing potions and we can deal with it. All right, this is pretty good. This is real good because we're going to block most of this. So what's going to happen is this is going to go. This is going to go. That's going to do nothing. They both are shielded, so they don't take any damage this turn. Now all we have to do is roll um, a cunning, and we're good. Well, some... Well, who's going to do that? Whoever does the killing blow will take one damage. And, yeah, we get the cunning. Uh, they both hit it. Who do we want to take? Well, we're going to have the tailor take it because she can heal herself. So she's going to deal the cunning blow. So we made a pretty good move. Um, and the smith was fine. There we go. All right. So far, so good. You would think, right? You would think. All right. Uh-oh, this can't be good. There is a deafening roar, and the passageway begins to shake. A section of the old wall begin beside you collapses, and you are buried beneath chunks of heavy stone. You are incapacitated. To remove the rubble crushing you, the other player must roll in unison, keeping track of any might rolled until they have rolled a might total equal to the number of players. After each attempt, you lose uh, you lose one HP until the total is reached. If you have not been rescued after three attempts, you manage to crawl from the rubble and continue your own way. You are incapacitated. Um, keeping track of any might rolled until they have rolled a might total equal to the number of players. The other players must roll in unison. Oh, man. So we... we uh, all right. So the numbers of players, there's two players. Oh, no. One player. Equal to the number... The other players must roll in unison, keeping track of any might rolled until they have rolled total might equal to the number of players. So this person would have to roll two. So what's the point? Okay. Let's see if she can roll might. I doubt it. Nope. Nope. And no. So he's going to take three damage. One, two, three. That's pretty much what it means. But still, to be this far along and not have as much damage. Hmm. I think the mats are part of the deluxe edition from the Kickstarter. Yeah, uh, Tim, I, I, I said in the beginning um, that I have everything now. And these are actually from the Kickstarter. Um, Thomas Pike, the guy who, who wrote this, saw our stream and, uh, and, and, and just asked if he could send the rest of the stuff to us. You're going to see a review on everything that I got on Monday. We're playing with some of the things. I'm not playing with everything because I want to save it for the review and then we're going to add some of the other things that come in here, which are just unbelievable. But here's the thing that we've been forgetting to do uh, already. So there's one, two, one, uh, one, two, three. We forgot to draw three cards. Uh, after every thing, you're supposed to draw a card. So... I'm going to, I can't give him anything, but I can exchange things out. Uh, here comes the rain, folks. Discard to apply a single cunning. This isn't bad. Restore when you roll doubles. I think I, I can keep this and might is something we might need because we can roll cunning. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to discard the rest of these <clears throat> so 
let's see if let's see if we can can do this and try to keep ourselves from from getting hurt yeah he 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 really was just so nice i told him i didn't need anything i told him i bought all the expansions and stuff but <clears throat> he insisted on sending the kickstarter stuff the the box uh all these these wonderful um sleeves and everything didn't you just roll for the tailor but then apply the damage to to the smith no uh the tailor had a roll for you which was the smith the smith was the one that was incapacitated it says you are incapacitated that means this person right here and the other players had a roll might equal to how many players there were wasn't able to do it so they get applied the damage there we go all right let's keep going this passageway leads to a set of old stone steps they descend into a flooded cave the water is murky but dim light is visible at some distance below Take a deep breath and dive, kicking towards the light. Each player must try to roll doubles in one attempt. For each uh, doubles in one attempt. For each player's success, you make it through to the surface on the other side. Failure, you begin to flounder and lose one HP. Try again. If you have not succeeded after three attempts, you make it through breathless and exhausted. Oh boy, so um, we have to try to roll doubles. But I get to, well, I only rolled this die. Uh, one. Two. Three. Okay, see, he's going to take three damage. You die quickly here. One, two, three. Boy, now ha holding on to this axe. They can trade. Well. All right, let's see what happens with our, our friend here. One. Oh, she made it. So she only takes one damage. Whenever you would lose HP, discard this item. Yeah, but let's save it for something really hor horrendous. So she's down to 16. I think, boy, I think we're going to lead. We're going to change up. We're going to have her lead and give him a chance to try to... <laughs> to uh, catch his breath a little bit, hopefully. All right, let's hope nothing bad happens here. Ugh. The amount of hot food has led you to a, the kitchens. On the table near the door is a steaming meat pie. As a group, choose one option. Move on, it's not worth the risk. Turn the next chapter card. Steal, nominate a player to roll too cunning. Ooh, in three attempts. If you succeed, the pie is delicious. Both players gain an HP. If not, we are going to fight. Um, this cunning stinks. And there's two cunnings on this die. I don't trust it. I'm going to have her roll it. <laughs> yeah, as long as the house stays up, it'll be thematic. <laughs> All right, so we've got to roll two cunning in three tries. Uh-oh. Looks like I... Oh, there they are. Nice. All right, so everybody gains an HP. That was a lucky roll. All right, so we're up to 11. All right, let's see what we, let's see what we will face next. Oh, whoa, 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 With a piercing wail, a hideous creature emerges from the darkness ahead. It drools at the sight of you. As a group, you choose one option and then begin. Surround the beast and attack from all sides. It would be three dice. This would be five dice. But it's three damage each time. I am going to choose... To surround the beast from all sides and take my chance so we're gonna have a might because I think that with our three dice we can maybe get out of this in one shot oh it's three might uh oh that may not be what we need here folks 
Oh boy, I may I made a major gaff here. All right. So everybody would take three damage. Not cool. Oh, nothing. We removed nothing. Uh oh. <laughs> so um, she's going to discard this. Oh, discard this. Deploy a single might at any time. Good time to do it. That'll do it. And then I'm going to discard this so she doesn't take any damage. All right. And then he's going to lose three. One, two, three. All right, come on. We got to get two might here. Two might. Oh, two might. Any, nobody takes any damage. Perfect. Woof. Woof. That was tough. That was tough. Uh, Smith. Smith's hurt, though. And I need the Smith. Smith is almost like my best my best player. Um, I wonder if I'm going if I should do this. Well, anyways, we defeated the Minotaur, so we get a partial partially rotten apple. Discard to restore one HP to your character. Now, I, we can swap this. She can carry the axe, and she will get the die here. He's going to take this. And he's going to eat this right now. And he's going to restore one HP. We got to do what we got to do. All right. Oh no. Oh no. 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 This, this, this cannot be. The smell of manure is as thick as, as is thick as you enter this chamber, flanked by a wooden animal stall. An agitated beast of burden has broken free of its pen and now blocks your way. It is cornered. Mighty horns are ready to gouge anyone who gets close. Begin combat. Combat spe special. Each round, when it attacks, this creature deals an additional HP of damage to any player, any players who hit it. Ooh. So it does two... So it is, this is such a great game, by the way. All right, let's roll these and see what happens. Okay, all right, we can deal with this. It's a little bit of everything. Um, hopefully we can just take him out, which would be nice. Um, boy, do I want to rest him. This might be a good time to rest him for one. I'm... No, I can't afford to rest him. We can't afford to take three damage. Or can she? Boy, I'm I I, I think she can. I'm gonna rest him and go up one HP. Smith can eat an apple before placing it in his inventory. It went into his inventory and he ate it. Alright. So we're going to get rid of these two. She hit him, so she's going to take three damage. One, two, three. You can use the cards at any time. Um, I think I'm going to rest him again. Let's see if we can finish him off. No, I think I'm going to have him fight. Let's just make sure that we get this might. And we do get the mic. I could have done it with just this. Well, what are you going to do? All right. If we knew our dice rolls, we would win. Okay, so now we're going to get a card. Elixir of Insight. Discard before any round of combat to change any chapter die to show a trait of your choice. All right, that might work. I think we're going to. I think we're going to keep that and see what happens. All right, so. Let's give the smith back his dice, and she gets two. All right, let's keep moving along. Oh, great, great. Uh, hmm. All right, so a skeletal form lies slumped in a corner of the this dark chamber, beneath the dust of ages. Uh, well, we're going to hold on because that's my daughter and we don't know what's going to happen. Hello? Hello? 
Hello? Oh, I think she pocket dialed me. <laughs> that that's it's unnerving with with everything going on here. Um Okay, I'm sorry, I'll read this again. And I apologize for the interruption. But it was you know, with weather and all the other stuff, you kinda wanna make sure the kids are alright. A skeletal form lies slumped in the corner of this dark chamber. Beneath the dust of ages, it still clutches a moldering map. As a group, choose one option. Move on, something isn't right here, turn the next chapter card. Steal the map, nominate a player, roll two wisdom in three attempts. Success, the map leads to a hidden cache, draw two item cards. Failure, the skeleton twitches and rises. Who can roll two wisdom? That's the problem. We're not really good at wisdom. Two wisdom in three attempts. Uh, I'm going to go with the smith. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if we... Well, if we get the two cards, we can't keep both of them. I think we press on. There's something isn't right. Yeah, we're going to press on. We can't afford any more uh, attempts. And, we, and because we did not... We, do we get a, a an item card? No, we don't. All right, an old haggard woman appears out of nowhere and offers to read your fortune. Something in her eyes speaks of greater power. You feel it is wise to comply. Each player must individually declare a trait and then try to roll it in in one attempt. For each player, you may gain one HP or draw an item card. Uh, the steal the the witch steals part of your soul if you fail. All right, let's try it. Um, I'm gonna go. Well, her strength is her strength is cunning. So I'm gonna go cunning. Come on. No, we're gonna lose one HP. Depressing. And then our smith uh, is might. And no. <laughs> oh, we're going to lose one. And uh, yeah, we lost part of our soul. Awesome. After surviving combat. Well, we didn't combat anything. Hmm. All right, let's keep moving on. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> you have been haunted by you've been hunted by a, a, a ferocious castle by the ferocious castle hounds you become separated and each of you must fight alone roll a chapter die in front of each player to represent the hounds attacking them however the hounds can sense weakness players with less than half their starting HP should roll two chapter dice instead of in, should roll two chapter dice instead hmm all right so we're gonna have to okay she does not have half so we're gonna roll this in front of her and it is going to be that and in front of him because he's less than half oh wait a minute with less than half of their starting HP. No, they do not have less. 9 and 9 is 18. That is not less than half. So he only rolls 1. So let's see what he faces. Oh, great. All right. So let's see how this all pans out. She's going to go first. And completely miss. How do you miss? How do you miss that? Ugh. Takes one HP. Second time gets it and kills him. All right, now the Smith rolls might. Awesome. Uh, he is going to lose. Oh wait, no, hold on. Nope, I can't do that. And. Nope, but shields does not take a damage. 
does take a damage. Uh-oh. Come on. Takes another damage. We could lose right here. <laughs> Takes another damage. Finally. Wow. That was horrible. No player can rest until the hounds are defeated. Then, then they may either rest or help another player. Oh, the, oh. The player aiding another player takes damage as normal and must declare who they are rolling. Oh, so I screwed that up. But that's all right. That's part of the game. Let's just say that she rested for those rounds. That's fair. And it took him five. So that's what we'll do. We'll just say she rested and that evens it out. So we're going to be able to draw a card. Discard to apply a single wisdom at any time. All right. Well, let's see if we can get him healed back up. We definitely need to do something here. Oh, great. What is this? Yeah, I had a shield, so let's let's put that up. I, I thought I missed a shield. So we're at six. We're fine. At the end of the passage is an old stone well. As you reach in to test the waters, it thrashes in a violent torrent. You have disturbed a, mane a malevolent spirit. Begin combat. Combat special. You are incapacitated for the first round of combat, during which you do not fight and you may not rest, but still take damage as normal. You recover at the beginning of the second round. Okay, so she can't fight. Great. So we have that, that, and then two dice. So, hmm. Let me think, wisdom, okay. You can change a die to anything. Okay, well, let's do this. I'm gonna change this to a might. Okay, I'm gonna discard. All right, then I'm going to discard this and apply it, apply a single wisdom at any time. All right, now we're going to roll, and wow, that did nothing. So we're going to take two damage. Two. Now she can come back in and fight. And what I'm going to do is we're going to rest the smith for how long, however long it takes. Oh, I shouldn't have changed that to a might then. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to take two damage. One, two. He's going to go up one. Going to take two more damage. He's going to go up one. Come on, let's get a mite. Nothing. It's going to take two more damage. It's going to go up one. All right, now it's getting to the point where we all have to fight. Oh. All right, two mite. Woof. That was brutal and unfair. <laughs> so Taylor took a real beating. Reroll your character die. Apply this. Apply only the second result. All right. Well, that's what we'll have to do. All right. Let's keep moving. All right. Where there was once flesh and fur, the bones of this skeletal beast now crackle with the menacing power of dark magic. Begin combat. Whenever you would remove a chapter die by hitting this enemy, roll it instead. If it, the result is wisdom, do not remove it. Put it back wisdom side up. Wow, that's nasty. So let's do that, that. And then we have to roll two. 
And it is that and that. All right. Let's see what we can do here. We've got to get rid of these. All right. So, this was pretty good roll. Okay, so when whenever you would remove a okay, so we would remove these three. Okay. We have to roll them if they come up wisdom. Okay, they, they go back. One goes back. All right, but he is not going to take any damage. She is going to take two. One, two. All right. Come on, we got to take them out. All right, let's see what this is. And I, both of them are, uh, defend off the damage. This is going to come out. If it's a wisdom, no, it is not. It's gone. Nobody gets hurt. We're good. All right, let's get rid of this. Hopefully, this creature. And we do with a wisdom. And oh, it stays. Hitting. Oh. Let's see if this we can get. Hello. I'm streaming. What's up? What do you need? Are you all right? Okay, just give me uh, about 15 minutes. All right, bye. She's stuck at the hospital. She has to stay there 24-7. Here, we'll just come up top and talk to everybody for a second. Yeah, so she's got to stay there until the storm goes. So she's got all kinds of stuff. Uh, she has not left the hospital, so... Um, they are on alert. It's part of being, you know, a lot of of the unsung heroes that you don't hear about: the police, the fire department, the power companies, um, the emergency, the paramedics. You know, all these people doing all these things to try to keep everybody safe. It's uh, uh, my daughter's part of that, and so is my future son-in-law. All right, so. I, I don't think we take the if the result is a wisdom if chapter died by hitting this enemy and put it back up on the wisdom side yeah you wouldn't take a damage I don't think all right let's try it again hopefully we can get rid of him yes we do but does he go away yes all right we survived that let's see what else we get here discard before any round of combat to change any chapter die to show a trait of your choice all right okay now I got to make a decision do I want to keep her yeah let's keep her and let's just see if we can muddle through this I think might is I got to get him a little bit stronger and then uh, maybe we can do it but it doesn't look we've only got a few cards left uh, let's see what happens. Uh, this game could be brutal at points. Yeah, it is, and that's what makes it great. I haven't won it yet. Ah, to enter this door, you are forced to push aside a thick thorn-covered vine. They spring to life, binding your wrist and hauling you into the thicket beyond. You lose one HP. You. Okay, so she's down to seven. Hacking at the aggressive weeds eventually causes them to recede and through the cracks in the old stone walls, leaving behind the belongings of, of two previous victims. Draw two item cards. All right. A rotten shield. Okay, so this could be key here. So... I'm going to get I'm going to get rid of these two. And I'm going to put this in place. When you lose when you would lose HP, reduce the amount by 1, down to a minimum of 1. Discard to restore 1 HP to your character. So that's going to help. All right, let's see if we can do this. Whoa! What the hell is that? 
You hear a scream from behind and turn around too late to avoid the clutches of the lurching ghoul. As a group, choose one option. You get away but lose 2 HP shaking off the ghoul. Begin a fight. You are so fear struck that any wisdom you roll this chapter has no effect. But that's a wisdom. So how would you beat him? So any... Hmm... Any wisdom you rolled this chapter has no effect. So how would you take rid of... Get rid of... The creature if... Huh. I think I'm just gonna flee and take the two... The two. One, two. So we're going into the final guy with five. I'm going to eat this to restore one. And hopefully we can survive this. So here we are at the final chapter. I don't know if we can survive this. Maybe we can. We're at the gate. Do not read until you have completed the last chapter card. This is it. You have reached the final challenge. One last obstacle stands between you and your freedom. After years, after getting, getting put into a cell because she followed her uncle to find out what the heck was going on, here she is. She has a chance to get out. Whoa! Terror of the Underworld. At, at the end of each round, if the Terror of the Underworld has not been defeated, he grows in strength. Roll a chapter die and add it to the roll of remaining dice. He does three damage. Oh, man. All right, so it's a might. This is going to be tough. I don't know if we can do this, but there is a way to do it. And then two dice. So it is, yeah, wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, so here's the way we're going to do this. Boy, I got to think this through here. All right, so we got that, that. This axe has really helped us. But now here comes this critical, critical point. Terror of the underworld. He is hes just gross. I don't know if we can beat him. All right, for this round only, we're going to roll everybody. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. Come on. we got to get a good result here. Okay, we do. So we take that out. But we roll a die and add that back in. Now here's the thing. We're going to lose three. One, two, three. Okay. He's going to lose two. One, two. All right. Let's see if we can do this. He is going to roll only. She is going to rest. So let's see if anything can happen here. All right, we took one of these out, but one comes back, and it is a might. He's going to take two damage. One, two. She healed up one. She needs to roll a shield. That's the only way we're going to survive. Let's hope she rolls a shield. He's going to rest. We just need a break here. Oh! That 
I would have came back. She's going to take three. One, two, three. She dies. So what happens? Well, let's read in the book of death what happens. Because if one of our per people die, that's it. So I'm going to read to you what happens. Th this book is cool. This is cool. So I'm going to read this to you. D-C-S-E. D-C. Uh, DC S E B C <laughs> Oh does it Oh I don't know if it has the monsters. Oh okay, here we go. Terror of the Underworld 97. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep, that's right. You are bested. Falling to your knees with blood streaming from countless vicious wounds inflicted upon you during your futile battle against the terror. With a sickening clarity, you realize he has only been toying with you. He has kept you alive, and after forcing you to witness the slaughter of your fellow prisoners, you understand why. Slowly he approaches you, leaning in close to scrutinize the fear that freezes your face. It seems to amuse him. You can smell the blood on him. Some of it yours. Mixed with gore of his previous victims, their encrusted remains smeared across his lipless mouth, his dead eyes unmoving, and with one stroke of inhuman strength, he plunges his hand deep into your chest and plucks out your heart. He bites it into it savagely, and the last thing you see as you fall to the ground is it being held aloft, drawing cheers from the from his lurking Renyan. Your adventure ends here. I mean, um, maybe we should have fought the ghoul. Those two HP would have helped us. You're so fear struck that any wisdom you roll this chapter has no effect. And yet wisdom was one of the things that you had to get rid of. I was confused by the rule. And I said, ah, let's just take the two HP and move on. It was the wrong move. It was the wrong move. The axe was fantastic. It got us pretty far. But what can you say? Again, I've been defeated by this castle. God, I love this game. I'll play this 50 times on, on air. I don't care if anybody watches or not. I think it's just fun. And if you guys don't have it, go check it out at Miniature Market. Or order it uh, through... Through Themeborn, that's uh, T H E M E B O R N E dot com, and and get everything they have. You have to. It's a must. It's an absolute must, because I'm telling you right now, this is just something. This is just something really, really cool. I was just seeing. It. Oh, Set a Watch is out at. Um, is out. At miniature market so if you don't have set a watch go pick it up I think you'll really like this game uh, I just got the all the releases that came out today so uh, see that's, that's part of being part of the big M M&M &M. you get to know things before everybody else so go check it out um, this game's brutal this game's fantastic I really I really suggest it I think it's a uh, it's just it's it's everything you want. It's thematic. It has a beautiful story to it. Her story was heart wrenching, and now she, you know, we just told the tale that she followed her uncle, who was a complete idiot. Okay, because she was curious. She got captured. She was in there for years. She almost gets out, only for the terror of the underworld to pick her up, rip her heart out, and just die a horrible death, which just was not befitting of our. Our dear girl. So, uh, 
Uh, and I wonder what the Smith's sad story was. But, you know, we didn't read that one either. So, uh, there you go. Another stream down. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I had a good time. I made a couple small mistakes, but it wasn't anything that I think would have helped me. Because that this guy here is nasty. He keeps regenerating something. So, if you don't take two from him, it's a long day at the bank, folks. Alright, with that said... Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob. We'll be back tonight probably. Uh, hopefully if uh, the power and the wind stays down and everything else. We're going to start getting more and more bands through here. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, I've got something kind of planned big. So hopefully we can do it. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob. We'll see you soon.